It is an inherited genetic disorder that is associated with a wide range of symptoms, including learning and behavioral challenges and intellectual disability. We'll be learning more from Dr. Tamar Goldwasser. But first, let's meet Alana, whose 11-year-old son has this disorder. We're going behind the mystery of Fragile X Syndrome. Like, it's this light bulb moment, but it was also this very slow reveal of, aha, those cousins in Atlanta have it, and now we're being told that we are carriers of it. We have to do a lot more research. I always wanted to be a mother. I couldn't wait to have children. Our older son was born in July of 2009, and I think it was that night that I turned to my husband and said, okay, let's do this again. Our second child, Yaron, was born in January of 2011. As he was developing, we started to notice that he was not quite as fast at developing as his older brother. We definitely weren't seeing him engaging with others or um, finding joy in the same ways that we had seen in our other child. Even as the signs started to become a little more clear, we were definitely in a place of denial. So around the same time as Yaron's first birthday, my youngest sister was pregnant and her midwife did genetic testing. My sister called one day and said that I'm a carrier for this thing called Fragile X. The Balancing Act spoke with OBGYN and medical geneticist Dr. Tamar Goldwasser to learn about this genetic disorder. Fragile X syndrome is caused by a change in a gene called the FMR1 gene. Within the gene, there are a certain number of repeated building blocks called trinucleotide repeats. Anywhere from 55 to 200 trinucleotide repeats in your FMR1 gene, you're considered to be a Fragile X carrier and you have a pre-mutation. Carriers of a Fragile X pre-mutation do not have Fragile X syndrome uh, versus a full mutation is when you have 200 or more repeats within that gene and the entire gene is turned off. Boys are generally more severely affected than girls and patients from all walks of life, all ethnic groups, all populations can be carriers for Fragile X. Individuals with Fragile X Syndrome can have intellectual disability, learning issues, behavior issues, features of autism spectrum disorder, and can also have some classic facial features like a prominent forehead or a longer face. Other medical issues come up such as recurrent ear infections and even anxiety. After the family met with the genetic counselor, Alana was tested for Fragile X through her OBGYN and discovered that she was not only a carrier, but had the mutation on both of her X chromosomes. At that point, Yaron was 14 months old and we got a blood test for him. Our pediatrician called us and she was crying. We could feel right then how sad she was to tell us that Yaron had Fragile X, that his repeats on the X chromosome were over 200, kind of in an instant. The hopes and the dreams that you have for a child just came crashing down. When we hung up the phone with the pediatrician, both of us crying, I turned to my husband and I said, I'm so sorry. Um, that guilt in the moment was so much. Of course, my wonderful husband immediately hugged me and said, no, this is not anything to be worried about, to be sad about, to be guilty about. This is our beautiful, incredible child. Female carriers of a Fragile X premutation have an increased chance of experiencing primary ovarian insufficiency or premature menopause. They might see changes in their menstrual cycle and experience infertility at a much younger age. Both male and female carriers of a Fragile X premutation have a chance to develop something called Fragile X associated tremor ataxia syndrome. Patients in their 50s or 60s develop issues with balance, intention tremor, 
and can have cognitive decline and may have features that look like Parkinson's. So we wanted to have a third child, but we wanted to reduce the risk of having a child with the full mutation of Fragile X. So we knew we would have to do IVF with PGD. One of the other parts of being a carrier is having what they call FAXPOI, which is Fragile X associated primary ovarian insufficiency. And so that door closed for us, which was obviously very hard. Um, but again, we were able to then say, let's throw our energy into what we really need to do, which is taking care of the two children that we do have and being aware of the issues, not only for Yaron, but also obviously for his older brother. Diagnostic testing for children with fragile X syndrome is important. You can help parents and healthcare providers figure out what services might benefit the child the most. Fragile X can be inherited from people who don't have symptoms, which is why carrier screening should be offered to all patients. From a women's health perspective, knowledge is power. And secondly, if you are pregnant and learn that you might be carrying a child with Fragile X syndrome, it can help you decide where will I be delivering this baby, what services are available in different neighborhoods, and what insurance policy to take. If you're experiencing infertility due to ovarian insufficiency, testing for Fragile X carrier status should be part of your workup. So this has become a huge part of our family. There are three sisters, we're all carriers, and we have eight boys between us. And in addition to my son and my nephew who has Fragile X, almost all of the other boys are carriers as well. The real part of the mystery for us was my mother's father, my grandfather, who died in 1992 of what was diagnosed as Parkinson's disease. It really was fragile X-associated tremor ataxia syndrome. So all of a sudden, the family tree is starting to open and we're wondering if we had known back then, how would life be different today? Having carrier screening is a big decision and it should be done with the guidance of your OBGYN or a genetic counselor. Counseling is really important both pre-test and post-test because learning the information can take a while to process both emotionally and intellectually. In my experience as an OBGYN and a geneticist, there's no avoiding that feeling of sometimes guilt and no one chooses what they inherit from their parents and we don't choose what we pass on to our children. So Yaron is 11, he's in fifth grade. He can spell, he likes math, he likes to sing. There's certain patterns and comfort and routine. And as long as we stay in that, we're okay. If your child is experiencing developmental delays, you should speak to your pediatrician who might offer genetic testing or send you to see a specialist. If your child receives a diagnosis of Fragile X syndrome, it's really a team approach. The pediatrician, the family, and specialists all work together to take care of the children. I think the more you can know and you can advocate and you can um, make decisions that are based on knowledge and information, the better. And really being able to think toward the future and how this moment in time and this awareness is going to shape our future generations. It's a very powerful thing and it's really a gift. For more information on Fragile X Syndrome, visit discoverfragilex.com and you can always visit our website, thebalancingact.com. We'll be right back.